please, before you sit down, can we read uh, Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 and 2? There was a famine in the land. Do you know that there is famine in the land? Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. So, famine is not a new thing. It has happened over and over and over. But there is something you can do to live beyond the famine. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerah. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Somebody will not go down to Egypt. Can I hear a louder? Amen. Amen. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Jump down to verse 12. Live in the land I shall tell you. Then Isaac did what? Sold in that land. Which land? The land that I will show you. And reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Get ready. It's in 2024 that you will reap home. <laughs> our, our sister has told us the harvest is a season you will not miss your season in the same year a hundred four and the Lord bless him the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants so the Philistines envied him now the theme of this program is what? Good habit. Where is it taken from? It's from the, this same passage, but from the contemporary English version. C-E-V, verse 12. Isaac did what? Planted grain and had that same year. Somebody turned to your neighbor and said, there will be good harvest coming to you. Say it louder, good harvest is coming to you, my brother. This same year. year. Can I hear a louder? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Be seated in his awesome presence. So when we talk about good harvest by implication, there is also bad harvest, isn't it? When you say good harvest, it means there is also bad harvest. Now, we're not considering bad harvest in this meeting. We're talking about good harvest. There are many factors that guarantee good harvest. Good harvest is a function of many factors, which we will not go into them in details, but I'll just mention them. Number one factor that guarantees good harvest is good seed. It's what? Good seed. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed. Matthew chapter 13 verse 24. That is like a man who sowed what? Good seed. That means there can be good seed and there can also be bad seed. So it depends on the kind of seed you are carrying. When we are talking about good harvest. Good seed. Somebody say good seed. Number two, we understand also... Good harvest is a function of good ground. There was a man, the Bible talks about a parable of a sower that Jesus Christ talked about four different types of ground that the first seed, even though they were good seed, they fell on the wayside. What happened to them? Birds of the air came and carried them. Another seed fell on stony ground. What happened? They sprang up but couldn't make anything. Another one went into stony Tons, same thing, they grew up, but they were choked. Only one particular set of good seed fell on the good ground. May you prepare your heart for this convention. Amen. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? Because no matter what it is, no matter what kind of seed is carried here, if the heart is not prepared to receive it, nothing will happen, sir. The preparation of the heart belongs to man. Answer belongs to who? God. So you must prepare. Tell your neighbor, prepare. There is somebody here. I am telling you there is somebody here. Now, the prophecy has started. Between now and Sunday, by the time you look back, they will say, ah, how did it happen to you? You will point them to the God of good harvest. If that person is here, scream louder, Amen. 
Another thing is good water. Paul planted. Apollos did what? what? Another factor is God's factor, which our sister here said. The apostle of faith said it to us. Yeah. No matter what kind of seed, there is an appointed supervisor that makes sure that the increase is given by him. God gives the increase. May God give you the increase. Amen. Not man. Can I hear a louder? Amen. Amen. So there are different kinds of things that determine good harvest. I'm not intending to go into so much teaching. But I want you to know some basic things before we go into prophesying into somebody's life. What do you need to know about good harvest? Number one, number one, good harvest is a season when ripened crops are gathered together. She has already told us that one. Harvest is therefore a time slot, not an eternity. Harvest is tied to timing. When a man misses that time, our pastor has said it, you may struggle and struggle and struggle without coming out of it because you miss the time of your harvest. But by the grace of God, that is why God has gathered us here. So that your eyes shall be open to your time. Amen. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Why, why we say this? Is because some of us, by the grace of God, we have seen over the little journey in life that people that miss their harvest, what they have passed through and what they are still passing through. At the time of your harvest, you are dictating. Hey, Kapunda Ali Kepusa, Elemusaka, anything that will cover your eyes from knowing your time, the Lord will remove it in this meeting. I said the Lord will break it down in the name of Jesus. I pray for somebody. You will not miss your divine timing. Things will change around you. Help me tell your neighbor things are changing now. Say a lot of things are changing now. So timing is very important. Everything about harvest is right timing. When you do not time it rightly, you have been told about the mango that may be looking green. Green outside. Everything inside is done, but outside may be green. So divine sensitivity is very important. Divine sensitivity. May the Lord God Almighty grant somebody divine sensitivity here. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number three. Harvest time is dependent upon seed time. Did you hear what I've said? Yes, Genesis 8.22 While the earth remains, seed time and what? And harvest. You can see that harvest does not carry time. It says seed time and what? Why is it not harvest time? Seed time and harvest. Harvest is a function of the time that the seed was sown. If you put a mango seed, it may take four or five years. Isn't it? If you have a grain of crop in your hand and you want to drop it, usually there are some that take six months, some take five months, take seven months, depending on the type of crop you have. Now, if you keep this grain with you and keep looking at it without dropping it, can you determine the time of harvest? No! Sir. no! As long as it has not been sown, no time for the harvest. The only time for the harvest is when you drop it. You can now say in six months time or in five months time. That is why harvest has no time. So you are the one that is delaying your harvest. Tell your neighbor, drop it now. Ah, see how somebody is. See how somebody is. Put it down now. Some people have kept our seed and we've been looking at it, looking at it. You cannot be talking about harvest when the seed is still no soon. As long as the earth remains. Is the earth still remaining? Yes. Seed time and harvest. Seed time. So by the grace of God, I believe that this program has come to open our eyes to know that this is the time. This is the time for it. 
Let me tell anybody there's a time for it. As long as the seed is in your hand, you cannot be calculating harvest. Tell your neighbor, drop it. Drop it. Say it louder, drop it. drop it. Number four, good harvest responds to principles of life, not rules. It responds to principles, not rules, my brother. Principles are eternal. They are things that you cannot do. You cannot make a principle, but you can make a rule. Rules are localized. And they are made by man. Principles are eternal. What is happening here? If it is the principle of gravity in Lagos, it's the same thing in New York. It's the same thing in Paris. It's the same thing in Germany. Everywhere I have traveled to in life, if it is principle, it works the same. So it doesn't matter whether you are in Bariga here. You are in a larger road here. If you follow the principle of the scripture concerning harvest, I'm telling you, you will have good harvest. Oh, yes. Can I hear somebody say good harvest? good harvest? It doesn't follow a rule. It follows principles. Yes. Rules are what this uh, social media are putting. And so some of us have looked onto social media so much that we have developed them as rules for our life. Sir, you will just be cheated in the journey of life. Because the principle of God cannot be broken and you expect any result. It's not possible. It's not possible. Now where is the principle seen? That's the passage she read for us. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also... is a principle. What you sow, you will reap. It's a principle. What you sow, you will reap. Why did he say do not be deceived? Why did God say do not be deceived? It's because brother A may not see what you are planting. But God sees it. And because our sister said God is the superintendent of the harvest. Now assuming it is man that gives the harvest. You will not know what you planted. So he can give you something different. But God has seen what you are planted. That is why he said do not be deceived. Let me tell your neighbor, do not be deceived, my brother. God sees what you have planted. If you have planted corn, he, saw, he has seen it, my brother. That's why he said, do not be deceived. And one thing with God is this. God personally supervises the harvest. You know that when God came to Sarah and Abraham, he told them that Sarah will have a child according to time of life. He said, I shall return. Why is he coming? To supervise To do what? That the miracle is according to the promise. It's not man. So don't be deceived because God is seeing. Your pastor may not see. Friends around you may not see. You can cover it very beautifully. But let me tell you. Principles are eternal. God supervises the harvest. Tell your neighbor so good seed. Say it louder, so good seed. And the thing about this principle is this. When we talk about sowing good seed, we're not talking about money only. We're talking about varieties of things. You can't be breaking the heart of that sister and expecting God to give you somebody that will not break your heart. It's not possible. You can't be breaking the heart of one, two, three, four. And you expect that you just go. Uh, God supervises the harvest. And the one thing about the harvest is not like the seed. The harvest comes in folds. Do you understand what I'm saying? And God supervises it. You can't say I didn't do this. <laughs> if in the western world they can even do this. Sometimes when you break the rule of a of a red light at a crossroad uh, and you go to court and you deny that you didn't do this. Number one, they will bring the camera that captured you. And to play that camera, you pay fine first. You pay for it separate. Now, if man can devise a means of knowing that you have done this, what about God? How can you deny that? Whatever is not limited to money. Whatever is whatever. 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 Don't be, don't be deceived into believing that it doesn't matter. It matters. So. It matters. 
you will undoubtedly harvest what you planted. You will harvest it. But I pray today the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 says, And behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. His work. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That is what God says. But I'm praying today that God has come to prepare our heart so that before the end of this program, everybody will know exactly what to do to enter into good harvest. If there is anything that God has sent me to do here, is to make sure that somebody has stepped into his good harvest. I don't know what area of harvest you are trusting God for, but get ready. This program will release it to you. What are the covenant steps that you and I must take to ensure good harvest? Covenant steps. Number one, I've said it over and over. Sow the right seed of what you want all the time. Sow the right seed. Sow the right seed. Put the seeds that are good. Put the seeds. If you want love, do what? Put the seed of love. If you want favor, do what? Put the seed of favor. There is nobody here that does not have someone that you are above. Jesus Christ in defining to us who is your neighbor in the story of the good Samaritan. You know, he asks the, the man, that, the young man that asks him, who is, my, who, who is my neighbor? He gave him the story of the Samaritan. At the end of the day, he asks him, among the priest and the choir master, the Levite, and this Gentile that assisted this man, who is now a neighbor to this man? What was his answer? He said, the neighbor is that man that a Gentile that as he said this. Do you understand now the definition of a neighbor? Definition of a neighbor, the way Jesus Christ has put it, is different from the one that has put one room beside your room. Definition of a neighbor is the fact that somebody who is in need and you are in the position to assist. That's the definition of neighbor. So, you want favor, put the seed of favor. Don't be doing this favor and expecting favor to follow you. God supervises the seed. Tell your neighbor, put the good seed. Number two, I will just put three and we're going to pray. Number two, take the step of faith during the season of your harvest. Step of faith. As you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, now you will see that there are so many things that the Holy Spirit will want you to take, to take as a step. Number one, Isaac shouldn't have sown while well, there was farming. How could Isaac put seed when there was no rain? There was famine. Famine in those times, because it was an agrarian community, means there was no rain. It was drought. Dry season. This man took a step of faith. Put the seed on that same year. Bwah! Hundredfold. So it is in the time of famine, in the time of drought, that God expects you to take a step of faith. Everybody is crying now that look, economy is this, everything is this. But do you know that you can live above it? If you understand this principle. You can live above it. It is in the midst of the dry season that you take the step of faith. Tell your neighbor, take a step of faith. The reason for the step of faith is this. Joshua chapter 3 verse 15. And as those who bore the ark came to the Jordan, and the feet of the priest who bore the ark deep in the edge of the water. For Jordan overflows its banks during the what? During the whole time of? When does Jordan overflow? There are so many things that are discouraging during the time of harvest. There are so many things that are telling you that, look, you can't take this step. Jordan overflows during the time of harvest. Jordan overflows. Many challenges during the time of harvest. But somebody is going to cross the Jordan. Amen. I didn't hear a louder amen. amen. Satan will come with so many things and several other things. And I will show you from this scripture that actually the children of Israel were about to cross into the promised land. The land of harvest. And that was the time that Jordan overflew his bounds. 
How did I know that is the land of harvest? Did you know that those people that he sent, the spies, the twelve of them came with the fruit of the land? Yes, sir. They harvested the fruit and they said, what? That's why those people were very big. They were giants. And they brought it to Moses. They said, look at it. It's real. They were to cross into the land where there was plenty. And Jordan overflows. You say, not during this time of harvest. You can only go when the harvest is over. There are so many people who are being deterred by Jordan. But one of the assignments that God has sent me here, listen very carefully, listen. And these servants of God will join me to do. We're going to take a prophetic step. He said, as soon as the men that bear the ark of the covenant oh, yeah. dip their feet into Jordan, Jordan divided. We have come to divide your Jordan today. Somebody is not shouting a louder Amen. That is why when that sister said that your father knows when the harvest is. And your father also is responsible for dividing your jaw down. Because we bear the ark. All of them will join me at a point in time because that's what God told me. We're going to put our feet one here, one down. Representing every Jordan that has overflown his boundary around your life. Hey! Today you are going to cross. Yeah. Somebody didn't say a loud amen. You will cross. Yeah. I say you will cross to the other side. Yeah. Did you know that the other side is the promised land? Yes. Immediately they cross to the promised land, and the Bible said they ate the produce of the land. Manna cease. Manna did what? Cease. Why did manna stop? It was to tell them that look. Manna was not the ultimate thing. Yes, sir. <laughs> you have been living on manna. Hey, Kapunda Ladoseke. Somebody is indulging today, going into deluge of blessing. Something that is bigger than you is coming your way. In the name of Jesus. What God was telling them that is that look, manna is not the real thing. Your good harvest is in the promised land. And they have shown you the fruit of the promised land. You will enter into it. Look at Joshua chapter 5 verse 10. Now the children of Israel camped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month of twilight on the plains of Jordan. Verse 11. And they ate of the produce of the land and the day after the Passover on living bread and parched grain on the very same day then the manna did what? Verse 12. The manna ceased. Telling them that you have stepped into your harvest. Good harvest. Manna was not the ultimate. Something that drops. They don't even know it. Finally, number three. You need consistent patience to enter into your good harvest. And let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season. Verse 9 of Galatians chapter 6. We shall reap if we do not lose heart. Let's not grow weary. Help me tap your neighbor and say don't grow weary my brother. Because every good harvest is a season in a man's life. But anybody that you have seen enter into his harvest. It is rooted in his story so. The stories of his life. Everyone today that is giving you testimonies of what has happened or what is happening and this, this, this. Don't look at the testimonies. Look at the stories. He said, be patient. In due season, you will have your harvest. You will reap if you faint not. When there is a slot for you, take advantage. And Takala, every lies of the devil will cancel it today. Amen. You will rise above that situation, Amen. you will go beyond that situation. Amen. Every issue of hand to mouth, cancel tonight in the name of Jesus. I say, cancel tonight in the name of Jesus. We must take prophetic step today to plunge you into whatever is your harvest, you must enter into it. This program has come to produce men that will cross into their promised land. 
into the land of harvest into the land that flows with milk and honey you will cross there can i hear amen, amen. let me hear a believing amen. amen let me hear three powerful amens amen amen, amen. amen. thank you blessed redeemer close your eyes and say father i am available say lord i'm available for you reach out to me say lord i reach out to me your word has come I want to trust you tonight. I open up my heart unto you. Can I hear somebody pray it loud? I open up my heart to you. Whatever represents my river Jordan, let it part way today. In the name of Jesus.